Hello guys, Brad here again with another fragrance video. Today I want to do a video called Top 10 Reasons for Not Buying a New Fragrance Release. Um, I've been, you know, on YouTube for a long time, testing fragrances and buying fragrances. Typically I don't buy the brand new fragrance releases. I buy a lot of samples. Occasionally I buy bottles. Usually they're fragrances that have been out on the market for a while. But I do notice... In this day and age, more so probably than ever on YouTube, that uh, people were reviewing the newer fragrances and encouraging people to buy the newer fragrances. And in this video, I want to give you 10 reasons why I think it's probably not a good idea to run out and just buy a new fragrance. Now, uh, maybe, you know, I'm just an old guy that just has a bad attitude about everything, but uh, I think a lot of these uh, ideas are worth thinking about. And I hope you'll take them to heart if you're watching this video. First reason is price point. Uh, I think it goes without saying that if you buy a new fragrance, it's going to be more expensive than if you wait a couple years. Um, so why not get that fragrance when it's a little bit cheaper? Uh, bang for buck is a lot better, and you'll feel a lot better about your purchase knowing that you got a better price point on it. So uh, this isn't always the case. Some fragrances maintain the price point. Maybe in some cases, like the niche market, fragrances can actually get more expensive more expensive over time. So you might want to just do some research on the general trends for that particular fragrance house and see if their fragrances typically get cheaper over a year or two on discount or websites like uh, FragranceNet. Number two, fewer reviews. It goes without saying, the newer releases probably don't have as many reviews available, not just on YouTube, but base notes. Um, for Grantica, if you really want to make an intelligent decision based off of reviews, I would encourage you to read all of the reviews and watch all of the reviews you can to get the best, most informed uh, idea of what you're dealing with, and then test it and then make your own intelligent decision before you buy it. One or two reviews might not be enough to get a good idea. Number three, a controversial one, biased reviews. Uh, we all know the drill. The prominent fragrance reviewer gets a free bottle of fragrance, and they do a review of it. Some people say, well, if it was you know, a sponsored review, they're going to say they liked it even if they didn't like it. And I'm not here to uh, you know, say that the fragrance reviewers out there on YouTube aren't honest. That's for you to decide, but I will say two things. One, it's uh, hard to bite the hand that feeds you, when you are a fragrance reviewer, if someone gives you something for free, you hate to say that you don't like it. Number two, uh, um, if you got it for free, what do you have to lose by saying that uh, you, you like it if you really don't? It's not like you spent 80 or $90 out of your pocket. You know, you're just not as invested in the uh, product, I think, if you got it for free than if you bought it. Uh, of course, you know, since I'm not sponsored, I can't necessarily put myself into the brains and mindset of some of these sponsored reviewers. So everybody has to decide for themselves who's being sponsored, who's being honest, blah, blah, blah. But I would say that, uh, you know, more biased reviews on the more modern, newer releases than on the vintage stuff out there. Uh, four, in the same vein, is rushed reviews. Everybody wants to be that first person out there to get that video out on YouTube for that new release. Buy the fragrance, you hurry up, put it on, you put your video out, because you know if you wait two or three more days, five or six other guys are going to have their video out there. They'll get all the views, and nobody's going to care about your opinion because you waited too long. So people are just going to base their review off the top notes. Don't really give it an in-depth wearing, a full wearing, or different wearings for different occasions, different weather conditions, different uh, times of the day or whatnot. Not as good. Number five, performance. I think a lot of these newer fragrances have some performance issues, something to think about. Uh, I think there might be a lot of pressure on the fragrance companies to make weaker fragrances because so many people are against public fragrance wearing, almost like cigarette smoke. You know, back in the 90s or so when people were like, that's banned you know, cigarette smoke from restaurants because it's so offensive. Now people are like, that's banned cologne and perfumes from restaurants and hospitals and workplaces because it you know it 
agitates my allergies or it makes me sick. So maybe the fragrance houses are saying, you know, okay, fine, let's just tone down these fragrances a little bit, make them, you know, so weak that they hardly even last at all. Number six, flanker overkill. A lot of these new fragrances coming out are just flankers of something that's been out for a while. I think the new uh, uh, Blue de Chanel that everybody's talking about, it's just a perfume strength of Blue de Chanel EDT. And of course, all those Steve St. Laurent uh, loam flankers that are out there. Um, so, so many flankers and people are just basically taking an old fragrance making a couple little tweaks in the top notes, coming up with something new, and it might not be worth your money or your time. So something to think about as well, the flanker overkill situation. Number seven is uniqueness. Uh, I think it's getting more and more difficult for fragrance houses to come out with something new and unique. It's kind of like, uh, how many different ways can a person smell fresh and clean, you know, before you start to repeat what somebody else has already done? So you, know, you might want to make sure that uh, the fragrance that buying for top dollar is unique and not just some kind of a retread of something that's been out for five or six years. Number eight, polarizing note fads. It seems like uh, we see these from time to time. I remember when oud was the big thing. Every fragrance house had to have an oud scent. Every fragrance house had to have a rose scent. Some of those notes aren't necessarily the most crowd-pleasing notes, so uh, you might want to skip even having those in your collection. If you're just looking to smell nice and clean and when you get compliments some of those uh, note fads are just that fads I think you know two or three years from now back to the bottom of the shelf there unisex trends is number nine notice that a lot of today's fragrances have this unisex smell to them a lot of florals in there a lot of sweetness in there uh, doesn't really you know jive with my perception of what a man should smell like. I don't know why this is, you know, everybody has to smell like candy or flowers or like a woman or whatever. Something to think about. Maybe not all new fragrances are like that, but a lot of them seem to be. Number 10, so many overlooked gems at rock bottom prices are out there. Um, you know, do your research. Go on uh, fragrance net. Look around and see what, what's available for cheap uh, $15, $20 uh, fragrances that used to be maybe $60 or $70 several years ago. You could get five or six of those for the price of one new fragrance. You could almost have a whole collection of fragrances for the cost of one new fragrance that you might not even like. Just because one reviewer on YouTube said it was great and you thought you had to have it. So, 10 things to think about today before you buy your next uh, fragrance brand new at Macy's or whatever. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.